Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm KRX and this is us continuing our tutorial series for Europa Universalis. All DLCs, right? We're using all DLCs with the most up-to-date 1.3 Austria patch and the Emperor, including the Emperor DLC. Lots of new stuff with that. Although we haven't really interacted with a lot of that because a lot of that's focused on sort of Germany and Italy and France regions, these sort of uh, HRE affected regions which we haven't actually really talked about much because Iberia is kind of its own little world down here, to be honest, which is an interesting one and definitely a good place for a beginner player. Uh, but also there's a, there's a lot of interesting ways that this can sort of all evolve. I mean, the fact that Portugal has taken this land up here is kind of a bummer, right? Because ideally, I think if we had taken these provinces, we would have been able to have our contiguous uh, bit. We're definitely going to want to try to get these and then maybe eventually get these so we have some way to be able to walk around here without going through Portugal's land. Although we, unless we get Ceuta, we'll never be able to, to cross without Portugal's permission there, which is kind of unfortunate. But anyways, we're just continuing on here. And, and guys, if you guys are joining us like midway through the series, uh, there is a playlist link. I, I do use playlists uh, to organize the videos. So there is a playlist link down below in the description that will get you caught up. Uh, starting with episode one and, and you can work through uh, the episodes much more easily because what we are doing is we are trying to build a thematic foundation of understanding to introduce the different concepts and mechanics there's a lot of things we haven't talked about i mean quite honestly we haven't talked about corruption we haven't talked about prestige we haven't talked about legitimacy like what these things actually do what they actually like like the effects of them right just that more is better and and some some very uh things thematic things about you know more legitimacy more uh national stability and, and so on and so forth right so there are uh, things that we've talked about in a thematic sense, but we haven't gone through everything just just describing uh, the in detail like what everything means. It's it's more been like we're we're looking at things as there's context, as something happens, as we're actually tasked to make a decision based on something, right? And it looks like right now we have another banner here saying that we can invest in new technology. That's going to be for our military tech. Now I'm gonna we have an eight percent technology eight percent technology penalty. 8% technology penalty. That is bad. That is because the Renaissance is still not embraced. We can actually go to our provinces. Oh, so if we go to the, this tab here, this map mode, by clicking on the Renaissance here, we can see in the world where it's spreading. The green lines are where it's spreading. The dark green is where it's like embraced. Like these are the Italian nations that have embraced it already. We're looking in here and it's we can see that a lot of these provinces, they're, it's trying to spread in a lot of these provinces. In fact, we have a, we have a little mode here that is slightly different map mode, but it shows us similarly. But look how slow it's going. 0 0.08 per month. It is literally going to take 100 years for this to be erased, which means our technology penalty, in fact, spoiler alert, in 50 years, we're going to have to be dealing with colonialism and then printing press in 100 years, and then global trade, and so on. These institutions will keep coming. Each one of these can individually stack up to 50% technology penalty. So we need to be embracing these like in a timely manner. And by when we actually go to buy this, we're actually paying a net positive cost for this military technology because, simply because, um, of the 8% of the tech uh, penalty there. But however, military technology is very, very important. I think we're going to try to get this one to try to stay up to date as best as we can, as best as we can. Okay, we have a new unit. It says superior unit types. So we can click on the infantry. We know we just got a new infantry unit. If we hover over that, it tells us as well, the man-at-arms is superior to Latin medieval infantry. Okay, great. So man-at-arms, right? We click it. Cool. cool. We've slotted in our unit, new unit, new equipment and stuff, basically. We're handing out new equipment to the regiments and things. And, and these guys will have to recover their morale. But otherwise, that's it. It doesn't cost us anything. It's it's not quite as detailed as like a Hearts of Iron or something like that. Um, not quite as detailed as that. So there's a few things we could be doing with our diplomats. We could be building up a spy network on Telemsen because we'll need to rebuild up the spy network with them and get more claims so that we can justify more wars against them. We also need to spend the spy network that we have um, with the Morocco... And now the we already have a claim on this province. The only other province I think we can get a claim on is uh, Sally here. So if we go to fabricate claim, no, there's a couple of them. Oh, oh no, we can get a claim down here because ooh, because we are connected down here via the Canary Islands. I keep forgetting that we have this land down here. I keep forgetting that this is our land <laughs> down here in the Canaries. Um, there you go. Okay, but for the most part, we're going to get permanent claims on all this as soon as the conversions are done. The truce with Morocco is going to end in two years how are our conversions looking 
Why has that gone to 60? Why has that gone to 66? What's changed? Oh, our stability has gone down. Because our ruler did die. That affected our stability negatively. So our stability has gone down and it's affected our missionary uh, conversion strength. Wait a second, wait a second. Do, don't we have an estate over here that could give us some more missionary strength? This will give us 1% missionary strength and tolerance of the true faith will be 1 uh, plus 1 as well. So we'll have more uh, unrest, uh, we'll have more peace in provinces that are of the true faith. But then in provinces that are not the true faith, there'll be less tolerance in those provinces. Like right here, you can see there's intolerance, yada, 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 uh, because these are Sunni and so on and so forth. I think we do that, though, to be honest. I think we do that, because I think we desperately want to get these converted as quickly as we can. So if we go back to these numbers now, it's going to be 40 for this, and it's going to be... Um, that's going to be done quickly. So it's going to be a few years. It's going to be about... <sighs> It's going to be about four years before these are done, but when these are done, that is what's going to pave the way to the free claims in northern Morocco, which will give us a free claim on, on Sally. And I think we'll definitely probably want that. Um, that's actually the end of the line on this. That's kind of a bummer. See, that would have given us free claims on all of this too, but unfortunately, like northern Morocco includes these provinces that, that Portugal has just taken in their war. There's not really a race to take any of this stuff because no one's going to want to take it. Um... I'm just uh, consolidating up the troops there. These here, we could just mothball these heavies because it's going to be a few years before we utilize them. We could also be drilling with these guys. As long as there's enough supply limit for these guys to exist in these areas, we are going to want another general to drill the second army, right? We want to drill the second army. Actually, there's a few things going on that I'm noticing. So let's get it. Basically, I'm just doing this and I'm drilling. And, I'm, and the reason why we're drilling is because we're making tons of money. And, and I say tons of money. It's actually not tons of money. Um, and I'm looking over here at Tangiers and I'm thinking, that fort right there is not that great. I'm going to get rid of that fort. And that's because it's in the drylands. We'd rather have like Fez, which is a mountain fort, or Ceuta, which is a highland fort. And I think Marrakesh is a castle. Yeah, Marrakesh would be a really good sort of mountain fort as well. Um, we don't, this is a good mountain fort. We definitely want to keep that around. This is our capital, so it makes sense to keep that one. This is hills, which is not terrible. This over here is, is drylands, but we'll keep it around just because it is defending uh, this area here. However, what we could do is we could at least mothball these forts and save some more money. And we'll keep this one in tip-top shape because Rebellion could actually spawn here. In fact, the Rebellion is likely to spawn here. Assuming these are, the, these are Algerian Separatists, these are Tlemcen Separatists. So there's two different groups of Separatists. One group is going to spawn here. One group is going to spawn here. The fort there will tide those guys over for a bit and let our troops sort of organize and, and, and sort of engage them. So that's good. So our economy is looking pretty good. We have money that's coming in. We can upgrade those centers to level 2. We talked about how that was an age bonus to try to get... Uh, five uh, trade centers up to level two. So that's something we'll start to work on eventually. We, uh, see, that's the thing. Will we state these or we'll probably trade company all this stuff, I guess. I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. And we wanted to get that extra general. but we, and, and what I'm noticing is we actually need more power projection. We need more power projection. I'm going to pull back the Moroccan uh spy because for the most part we're kind of done with that i want to try to get about 10 we're embargoing england we're embargoing france we can't embargo morocco until our truce is up with them but what we can do is we could do a uh we could do a scornful insult on one of these countries and taunt them a little bit and that'll actually make their enemies like us more um if we did it on england we'd we'd get a little bit of favor like we go to insult here so regular insult is uh, simply just uh, gives us five power projection. If we do a scornful insult, we have to spend prestige. Actually, I guess we spend prestige, yeah, to do the scornful insult. We lose five prestige, but we'd be able to get uh, positive uh, modifiers with France, Burgundy, and Scotland. Yeah, that makes sense to me. We get 10 power projection. That puts us above 50. That's the critical thing here. Put us above 50 
means that we'll be able to get extra monarch points okay extra monarch points per month while we're above 50 we're going to try to maintain that as best as we can age objective being fulfilled that's counting we need to make sure we embargo uh, morocco as soon as we get the chance there because this is decaying down but we'll be able to do potentially a regular insult on france or something like that in a little bit we just want to make sure we also have uh, high prestige higher than uh higher than aragon's prestige level if we click on our own queen here our heir is nine years old yeah see i i don't know if the iberian wedding can happen right now because it's queen 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 but presumably, um, when this guy takes over, it'll be a male in a, in a, and we'll have a female on a 24 year old female on the throne, which wait a second, wait a second. Austrian culture. The heck? It's a Habsburg. Oh, I thought we had a right. Wait a second. I thought we had a rivalry with Venice. Did we eclipse them again? Burgundy, Burgundy, Burgundy. Burgundy, Burgundy, Burgundy. We were really hoping that Burgundy would like us. <laughs> we were really hoping that Burgundy would like us. Um, I don't think it matters anymore. Does it? Fine. You know what? We need a rival. That's going to help maintain our power projection. We need a rival, let's get Burgundy. We need long-term rivalries, right? That means that we're going to be getting plus three per year because of long-term rivalries. That means as it stands right now, we will probably have, um, we will probably have this for, the, we'll get the extra monarch points for the next few years. Multiple years we'll be getting extra monarch points, so that's good. It says we can get a naval doctrine. This is one of the things that comes with uh, one of the DLCs. And a naval doctrine basically costs us 200 ducats, it seems, based on the amount of sailors or the total size of our navy and stuff at scales. And we can get extra chance to capture enemy ships. We can make our trade ships more powerful, uh, sh ship trade power. I like that one personally because that helps tie into our economy, re reduce the naval maintenance. And we can also, the Grand Armada, this is unique to Iberian countries, is treasure, treasure fleet income plus 50%, which I think is actually pretty good. Um, because those treasure fleets, when we, once we start colonizing the new world, those, those tend to be pretty significant, actually. 200 ducats is pretty valuable, but once we do this, this cost is going to go up over time. So I'm just going to do this while we have a chance. I'm going to do this while we have a chance. Um, and we'll worry about doing, uh, the trade things and stuff in the future. We have 20 spy network with Tunis. That's the, that's the magic number. Let's get a claim here on there. On their land i'm just grabbing the provinces that we want to claim i just know that these are the only two actually no we can claim these three we can't t connect to these ones and this is too far away in terms of sea tiles but this one here these three here just like what we did with clemson we can do that with uh with tunis so we could work on those three with tunis tunis is interesting they are allied to the ottomans though ottomans are a very powerful country very powerful country so it's not super easy peasy um, sort of uh, going to war with the with the Ottomans. We'll have to take that very seriously if we uh, if we attack uh, Tunis. Looks like for the most part unrest is looking fine. There's a little bit there's a little bit of instability. So that is coming from the overextension that is getting bought down over time. Um, we could think we could look to try to build more ships, but we're at our naval force limit right now. It seems. We are not quite at our military force limit, but we have a very powerful army, and I don't feel like we necessarily have to build more troops. So you know what? What the heck? We could just top that off. More troops. If we're up to our force limit and we drill, um, we gain more. Like the more troops we have drilling, the faster that the army professionalism goes up. Um, but we have to pay for those troops. There's a maintenance associated with it. We could totally afford it, but I don't think it's I don't think it's required. Torrents of heathens would be decreased. That would increase the likeliness of these rebellions happening sooner, which I think would probably be a good thing, to be honest. I think that'd be a good thing. I think we want these rebellions to happen sooner rather than later. We got one of our conversions done. This one's going to do. Okay, so after Granada's done, that means that this mission will be complete and we'll be able to get the free claim on Morocco. Our truce is up with Morocco. Morocco has actually allied these guys. Would they actually join or are they in economically in a bad position? No, they would join. They would join. This is kind of a bummer a little bit. It's a little bit of a trickier situation. 
the good news is that Morocco, uh, their castles are, are deep over here, so we would be able to sort of siege down and sort of keep a defensive posture while still maintaining the, the war goal and stuff like that, which would be these two provinces most likely. Also, Morocco is getting beat up by, who like Morocco, dude. Like, let, let's, let's test the waters. I'm not going to attack them, but let's test the waters here and see how many troops does Morocco have. Well, it says they have 10,000. Even though they're fighting rebellion, it says they have 10,000. In fact, they have more troops than Tlemcen. Tlemcen looks like they abandoned most of their army. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, Tlemcen only has 4,000 troops. These guys only have 2,000 troops. And Morocco has about 12 or 13,000 troops. So Morocco is actually not that unhealthy here. It looks like Sus has nothing. Sus is just like really ravaged. Hmm. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. Let's get the claim on Tlemcen here, and we're just going to start claiming just whatever we can sort of over here, I guess. 25 is the magic number to get the second claim on Tunis. We're just letting time run here. So we there's no rush to attack Morocco immediately, but they are weak right now. There's no doubt they're weak. Um, but the thing is, they have one heavy ship, but they have no uh, galleys or anything like that. It doesn't make sense for Morocco to have galleys because galleys are only good. We haven't talked about galleys. Galleys are really effective in the Mediterranean. But the, out here in the open ocean, the, the heavies are the most dominant thing. And the light ships and the heavies are the best that you can have. Light ships just because they're really good for, for trade. And they have a little, I think they have more durability than the galleys as well. Galleys are really cheap and not very durable. But they're, they're good fighters in the, uh, in the inland seas, in the Mediterranean, in the Baltic Sea, in the, uh, the inland seas specifically. Yeah, I guess we're going to have a, a lazy merchant here, unfortunately. That's fine. That's fine. That does affect our trade income for a month or two, unfortunately. But that's how it goes. So we're kind of in a state of peace here. I think we are going to wait for this conversion to come in because... Which is going to take years. I'm, I'm no lie. Um, admin Tech 4. Admin Tech 5 is a very important admin tech. Because it gives you your first idea group. France is going economic ideas. Whereas England's still at tech 3, just like us. They're struggling just like us. Because they start with a 0, 0, 0. Which is even worse than our ruler. But our ruler is not good. Our, our new ruler is totally dandy. Um, a 4, a uh, 6, 4. But unfortunately, the, the lack of admin here is really really hurting us. It's like, here's the question. Do we get Diplo Tech 5? Or do we start to look at the core issues of the Renaissance and start to fix the Renaissance issue? Because essentially the way that we fix that, has, has this come in yet? No, we're still working on our cores. We can see here we have Corker. This is like a little menu just to show you what's going on. Where are your armies? Where are your navies? Uh, what are they doing? Where are your, what are your merchants up to? So on and so forth, right? Just a little reference thing. So we could look here that we could see unrest, right? We could see the Telemson Separatists are rising up. They're at 80% now. That's going to go red. 80% is the magic number on that. 8,000 troops, so let's actually stop um, stop drilling these guys so they can get ready to engage the rebellion. I think for the most part, I'm going to switch leaders here so that we can have the better general sort of fighting the actual battles against the rebels and the weaker general just drilling the troops. The strength of the general doesn't affect uh, the drilled troops or how fast the troops drill. But the generals can actually gain skills. We have a new claim that we can get on Tunis. The generals can act at 25 this time. The generals can actually gain skills by drilling the troops, which is really cool. They can level, they can literally level up and get extra pips and stuff. It's kind of neat. But what I'm thinking is the way that we increase. So we notice that Toledo is spreading slightly, right? It's slightly spreading in Toledo, but but not really at a rate that that's meaningful. Um. What we could do is we could look for a province. We can enact local encourage development. Okay, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it cheaper to develop land. And essentially what we do is when we notice when we develop this land, we are actually increasing the Renaissance presence in this province. Right now there is barely any, right? 8%. But every time we click one of these buttons, we'll get 2%. But that percent is going to go up. The higher development this province, the the actual, the the uh, more renaissance we're going to get. 
Right now it costs 40. So what we need to do is we need to actually invest our points. We need to invest our points into this province so that we can actually get the Renaissance to spawn here. Once the Renaissance is spawned here, it'll actually start to just, it'll start to just naturally spread throughout the entire country. The tricky thing is we don't have a lot of points built up right now, and I don't want to spend all the points just dev boosting. We call it dev boosting, basically, up a province so that we can get the Renaissance to be here in a meaningful, in a, in a meaningful manner. We're going to have to do that. So what you, that's what you, that instead of getting new technologies, we have to dev boost a province, which will be an investment for the future. And it'll help us get rid of this 11% so that our future technologies will not be blocked by that tech issue. But I'm really thinking I can't afford to do admin dev boosting like at all, period. Like we're just, we have a zero admin leader. We have, uh, we're not focused on admin here, which might've been a mistake from the very beginning. We could have done that admin focus right, right from the beginning. We do have a level two admin advisor, which is, 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 which is good. That's basically kind of making it like there's a two here in a sense, but you can still see that we're getting very little admin per, per, per week. We are at least above 50 power projections. So that's really, really good. Although in about three years that'll go away unless we do something and we will be able to do something at that point so it's not something it's not to worry about really um the thing is if we want to do admin we should do it while it's cheapest so what i'm going to do is i am going to dev a little bit of admin here just while it's really cheap i'm going to go down to 400 then what we're going to do is we're going to dev up the military as much as we can and then i'm going to and we can see that this is going up now now it's going to be three and a half percent every time we click this button i'm just going to dev this basically as as much as we can here we're not there yet but we can see that every click here it's going to cost 82 for every click so the clicks are getting more expensive but we're getting more renaissance per click this is going to take a few years this is going to take a few years but we're getting a lot of diplo we're getting a lot of diplo points per month and we'll see that we'll be getting about four percent probably per click so we're probably going to have to get this province the cool thing is there's actually an age bonus for having a large city. So once we get one more click on this, we'll have a large city. That'll be another age bonus. That'll be more power projection. That'll be more splendor. That'll be a lot of really good good benefits that we'll get because of that. Oh, did we just lose a claim on Morocco or did we just get a claim on Morocco? No, we didn't lose anything on Morocco. They might have got a claim on us. Nope, I'm not sure what that was. Uh, what that message was that just popped up. Something about Morocco, something about a claim. So next month, I think we can get another click just to kind of demonstrate that. And we can get a second claim on Tlemcen, it looks like. Okay, so if we look here at 5% to the Renaissance, okay? So if we're at 70%, that means we need to hit this only five more times now. Maybe even four times if we get lucky. So we'll have to hit two more times for military, two more times for Diplo. And, and that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to have to spend 200 military points and 200 diplo points, and then we'll have the Renaissance. That will start spreading through our country. It's going to cost us a certain amount of money to actually embrace it completely. We'll see how that works once once that once we get to that point. I guess we could just get a claim on this province. It's high, it's seven development, so it's a higher development province. But we'll just keep working on them, working on them, working on them. 30 away from there. Let's make sure the Pope is happy. We want to keep the Pope nice and happy. We have some papal... Uh, influence we've gotten to 50 so we could hit a lot of these different buttons now if we wanted stability it costs 100 so we don't have enough for stability but we could get uh, diplomatic reputation we could get yearly legitimacy we could get yearly prestige uh, national tax modifier uh, inflation reduction do we have inflation issues now we do have gold our country has gold um, this is a gold province that creates a certain amount of inflation per year in fact one thing that might be worth doing is actually devving up the production of the gold mine that is something we probably could have done. We didn't think about that because there was no context to that. We didn't know what developing our provinces were. But we could actually develop uh, this production here. I think most people kind of agree that getting it to about 10 is really good. Getting it to about 10 is really good. Uh, it has a chance to deplete itself. So this has a small chance to deplete and reduce its development. But for the most part, if we get this up to 10, we'll be making, I think, a disgusting amount of gold per month. Like... Um, it basically just gives you direct cash is, is what the gold province does, but that does give you inflation. So we've been gaining inflation because of that. And the Pope's willing to take care of that for us. Um, but I don't think we really, I don't think we really need any of this stuff. One thing we can do actually is we can save for the stability, which is always good. So 
we might just save it the stability. The other thing we could do is we could actually try to invest in becoming the Curia controller. And this gives us a ton of really awesome benefits. Um, but for the most part, I don't think we need that either. Okay, it looks like these guys are doing their thing. That rebellion has been quashed. Now, they're 50% away from Algeria. That's going to be 7,000 dudes popping up on a fort province. So we do not need to worry about them. So we are going to have these guys drilling. We need 30 spy network with Tunis before we're done with Tunis completely. and ready to just attack them and take as much land as, as, as will be justified. Uh, we are waiting on a conversion, a missionary conversion, in order to attack Morocco again. Although this is allowing Morocco and Tlemcen, some of these nations, to get a little bit stronger. Um, but that's fine because we're overwhelmingly way more powerful than these countries, so it's not that big of a deal. What is the actual uh, supply limit in Tangiers? You know what? I think I think for the most part, I think what we should do is we should actually get these dudes over to Tangiers, let them drill in Tangiers, and just have them sort of ready to go uh, a little bit more. I think that'll probably be just a, a better thing in, in terms of doing a quick decisive war. We're at 30 with Tunis. So we'll get a spy network again. Just click on the province that we want. We just know that we want these three provinces because we can't do any of the other ones. So that's, that's, it looks like I'm kind of like skipping steps, but for the most part, I'm just thinking through the fact that these are the ones that I know that we can claim because they're connected via the sea tile, right? This is directly touching here, but this is connected via the sea tile. And that's how we figure that out. To Lampson here, we could see that we can still do claims on just this province. So it's just these three. This one's not connected. These are not connected, these are not connected, so on and so forth. So now we have a free diplomat. We know we're going to get a free claim on these two provinces, or this province. We already have a claim on this one and this one. We'll probably end up taking the Moroccan coast, to be honest. Or I think otherwise we'll uh, we'll try to block uh, Portugal from, from doing... Well, the interesting thing about Portugal is that doesn't really prevent them from taking all of this. Hmm... Portugal is kind of an interesting fellow here. I think they need Tangiers. Unfortunately, the fact that we took Tangiers is really going to mess them up. Because I think they get claims on all of this, but they won't be able to get claims on this if we take these two provinces and block them from ever making it down this far into the coast of Morocco. They're not connected to the coast of Morocco. Madeira is not connected to that sea tile. So they can't get claims on any of this. But we need to take this province to block them from getting claims sort of this direction. Now, they will be able to potentially take this from Tlemcen and then eventually use that to kind of go into Morocco. But if we get this from Tlemcen in the future, then we'll be fine. We'll be fine. So I think our goal from Morocco is to take this and this, these three provinces, and maybe just work our way like up the coast or something, or maybe take this province or something like that. It's going to be kind of where we're, uh, what we're working on, I think, with the war against Morocco. So we have everything we need with Morocco. We can look at our allies and see, okay, 200, good, cool. Uh, Portugal loves us as well, but we could butter them up more. It doesn't really matter. We don't need these people to be at 200. Uh, everybody loves us. All our allies love us. Um, what we could try to do is we could actually just butter up Tunis. We could try to buffer them, or we could butter up the Ottomans or the Mamluks. Ottomans don't like us. Let's butter them up. Just because they're. it's not that we're going to be friendly with the Ottomans. We're just going to try to make them not hate us as much, I guess, right? Um, I don't think there's any buildings we want to build. We don't marketplaces increase local trade power. That's good, but for the most part, we're going to be increasing our local trade power by increasing the actual level of the uh, of the trade centers themselves, and also just taking more land, more important land in these nodes. That's how we're going to increase our trade power, and and that's also going to be fulfilling an age bonus. Now we filled this one, so that's two age bonuses done. So and then we'll be able to probably get a few more of these if we ever get the Iberian wedding over Aragon, which would be really really nice. And is totally possible, then we would um, we would get uh, uh, the two thrones, right? We'd take the throne of Navarra and we'd take the throne of Aragon. That'd be really, really that'd be amazing. We get free stability, or we get a bunch of money and lose um, in money now, and then take the national tax modifier hit. I think we want the free stability. I, I just like stability. It increases our missionary strength. It does all kinds of good stuff. I mean, what does it do, right? Global trade power, fantastic. Uh, foreign spy detection, plus 10%. Okay, that's not really that big of a deal. National unrest, always a good thing. Nice stability. More national tax modifier, so we get more 5% for each one. Yearly corruption reduction, that's really good because events will cause corruption. Imbalanced research will cause corruption. Um, overextension will cause corruption. That that causes for a lot, a lot of different reasons. Um, missionary strength is a big one, though. And institution spread as well. Uh-oh. I forgot about this, guys. Let's get this done. 
So here we're looking at this and we have, we have to hit this a few more times, I think. We're so close here. Now we could just let this finish out, but I think we want to like, we want to, we want to race across the finish line here and get this, uh, and get this done. We need a hundred development to get this done. But once this is done, it's just going to go boom. The renaissance through here is just going to be spreading like crazy. Okay, guys. We're getting ready to attack Morocco. We'll be attacking Morocco soon. Diets, we got some estate stuff to work on. Guys, thanks everybody for hanging out. We're about to have the renaissance in our country. That's a big deal. And we're about to uh, go to war with Morocco again and just continue to uh, progress further. Hopefully we'll get to colonizing at some point. But the reason why we haven't colonized yet because our admin technology is so low. We need to get that admin technology up, and we'll see how that works as we as we push further into this campaign. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I will see you guys in the next episode. Um, if you guys have questions, please ask. I, I read all the, all the comments uh, down below, and I respond to most of them. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.